So, I don't know where the hell our streets should go. And I don't know what the hell we use cloth for, honestly. Some of these have cloth costs. This cost, you know. I don't know if we have a good way of spending our cloth yet. So why don't we try and just pick up a coin? But let's put one of these here and one of them here and we'll gain a coin. Is that a competent play? I have no idea. Will we find out later? Yes, we will. All right, so we placed out our two citizens. We performed the action in the column and row in the order of our choosing. We paid any costs. Now we have to construct a building if possible, okay? Buildings are all stored over here on the side. They're level one, two, and three, okay? So these are just like kind of weird cost things. I don't know. So this uh, building here, the level one buildings, any two citizens on a, an adjacent area of the board will allow us to uh, pay for one of these buildings. And these are absolutely mandatory. We have to build buildings if we can. They're going to advance these tracks, cause scoring to happen, and move the game along. So we placed out two citizens. That means we can play one of these tiles, one of these buildings. And it has to go... Well, there's only one space, actually, that it can go on, right? Because we placed these citizens here. We're either placing one of, one of these on that spot there, okay? Or there's these little uh, corner guys, and we could place one of those here, okay? So let's make sure we get this right. Oh, that's right. And when we, if the first building in a row gets built, we get to get five points for it. Oh, maybe we can't build this building yet. Okay, so we have to... Let's talk this out. Let's talk this out. So, we place a building tile on an empty space. If it's the first one in that row, we gain five points, but we remove the citizens from street crossings surrounding the building, but no more than one citizen per crossing. So we actually, it will only be once at least two turns have been played that a building can be placed, which makes a lot more sense than just get first pick anywhere and then also get five points just for free, right? And then it says we score as many victory points as the lowest number visible among all of the citizen tracks. So currently we would score one point for placing a building. We get any benefits depicted on the building. And then we mark that we were the ones to have built that building basically with our building markers down at the bottom of our board. You can't even see these little discs down there. Okay, so we can't actually build a building because only at most one citizen per crossing, per spot that we've always placed out two, but at most one can count toward the construction of a building. So we need two for any of our buildings, so it's not happening. All right, so now we get to draw two new citizens from the bag here to replace the two that we placed out. The intersection that would be between those two narrow streets would now be worth less. Whoa. I just dropped the bag and messed everything up. Okay, I'm four for four on getting a matchy matchy set of citizens out of the bag. Weird. Okay. So let's play through a solo turn because the solo guy does it a little different, right? So let's make sure we get it right. The first turn's always brutal, right? So. We've got a little uh, AI deck over here. Perfect time for it to switch cameras. I mean, I guess it worked out okay. So we got a little AI deck over here. So we're gonna draw and flip the top card and it's gonna tell us what to do. 
Okay. So. Okay, so he looks for... The AI player is going to prefer his own intersections. If he can't do that, he's going to go somewhere where he can construct a building at the end of the turn. And if he can't do that, um, he's going to avoid your intersection tiles. And if there's a tie, then we use the arrow shown here to break the tie. Okay, so he would move left in the event of a tie. But if he moves one to here and places uh, citizens there, then he will be able to construct a building. So that's where he's going to go. Oh, wow. And we just like... Okay, hold on. So, in fact... We only use the arrow as a tiebreaker if there's multiple. He's always going to move to somewhere where he has his own intersection, he's able to construct a building, or he avoids your intersections. Okay, in that order. And if he can't do it with it by moving one, we expand the search radius to two. Okay, so we moved it to there. We get to draw and stack two citizens from the bag. We'll see if we get two samesies. I'm four for four on samesies now. There's three colors in here. Hey, the AI player does not get two of the same. We're gonna stack those guys right there. stacks them in a certain order, but we did it correctly. All right, and then he's going to perform the actions shown on his card, not the ones on the street crossing. He just ignores everything on the board. He doesn't pay resources. He's just going to screw with us and do the actions shown on his card here. So he's going to build a wide street and then I don't know how his, this is, this is one of the Sagrada tiles, these guys, I'm not sure how those work for him. So let's find out. Okay, so he's going to build a wide street adjacent to his meeple, prioritizing spots with benefits. Oh, this sounds exactly like playing a game with Martina. He's going to take one of these and he's going to place it right there covering up those two uh coins and then every time he gains resources coins or cloth we convert them one to two to points so that's four points for our friendly ai player here bull crap james will compliment you risto risto okay hold on listen Listen, I'm going to try and do this. You've been saving up. You've been saving up, friend. Uh, I'm going to try and do this, but I don't know if it's going to work because I should have a special view just for compl- It did not work. All right, so we'll just do it like here. I was, I had a nice extra zoomed in view for, for compliments, but uh, I think I actually deleted the scene out of OBS yesterday while screwing around, not anticipating someone redeeming that. Um, but Risto, I genuinely appreciate how uh, you have been like a nice vocal member of our community here. Uh, I think you're one of the regulars who basically always shows up even if it's five in the morning or 11 at night or whatever. And you're always, uh, always have something interesting to, to say and contribute to chat. And I genuinely appreciate it. Um, also, I really like personally appreciated that you obviously took the time to check out my latest video, watched it. It sounds like it was helpful for you and that felt really uh, validating. So I truly and genuinely appreciated that. Thank you. Risto, Martina nailed it. You're great. We love you here and uh, I'm glad that uh, 
I see you in chat. It puts a smile on my face every time. And I mean that absolutely, literally, uh, it, it always makes me happy to see regulars in chat. It, it, it like, <laughs> just today, you know, I was having an off day and you were cracking some jokes at the start of stream and it was genuinely helpful and I appreciate that. So thank you. Thanks for being here. All right. Back to whatever the heck I was doing. Building a building. Oh no, we were doing these actions. That's right. Risto caught me off guard. I thought that was chat. It's just my bot spamming. I think I forgot to score some points when I built my streets earlier. So we were supposed to score two points for this uh, these streets that we placed. And likewise, we're going to count the number of streets in this column, um, no matter who owns them. So there's only one. But these guys are worth double. They're worth two. So he's going to earn two points as well. All right. And then let's see how he deals with this Sagrada action. He just moves up on this track, which is going to affect um, scoring. I don't know if he immediately earns, earns the points. I think so. I think he takes those points immediately. Let's just double check. Man, the first couple of turns are always a little clunky, you know? So he's going to earn five points. So currently the score is two to 11. <laughs> and we're playing on easy mode. Fabulous. <laughs> All right. So he's, oh, we have to build a building too. Because he finished his turn and now he's going to build a building if possible. So for building a building, I think there's a priority list as well. He's got a priority list here. He's going to try and build a level three, then a level two, then a level one. And if not that, a little corner guy. So we know then he's going to build a level one building here because it's the only space with the adjacent stuff, right? Uh, and the arrow would be a tiebreaker, but um, that doesn't matter too much. Okay, so he's going to build one of these buildings. Whoa, I'm going to throw it. Why wouldn't I? So we're going to decide that these buildings, green space is going to face inward. Okay. We're going to take these two citizens and we're going to place them on their respective tracks down here. Because this is a solo game, some of these are already uh, kind of pre-populated just to make the game proceed a little faster, right? So we're gonna do that. We're gonna flip this, because this was the first building built in this row. It means he scores another five points. 
So it's currently two to 16. <laughs> Autobots always go zoom with points. It's true. It's interesting. Um, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing just to reflect on how solo games have kind of evolved. Um, and obviously there's different like implementations and so on. But a lot of modern solo rules are like, we're going to have a bot. It's going to kind of get in your way. And generally it ignores costs and we have some kind of facsimile of a way to score points that ends up being kind of equivalent. And I sort of have a love-hate relationship with that sort of thing. You know, I would prefer that there was a little bit you know, a little bit more intention behind the bot design, but obviously that's extremely hard to do uh, with physical components, right? But uh, yeah, it's pretty typical that they just sort of like are, oh, look, I didn't actually use any resources and I have a million points. See ya, nerds. You know? Not uncommon at all. All right. So, he built that building. Did I miss anything else with the building construction? It's the first one we've done. Let's make sure we got it right. Put it out. He was the first one. He got five points. We removed the citizens and placed them on the tracks. Oh, he also scores an additional point because that's the lowest visible on the tracks. Forgot that one. Uh, he gets the benefit from the newly constructed building, which means he moves up on this track. I also forgot that. Whoops. And we got a mark that he constructed that guy. has not been any scoring yet. That's the only other thing we would do. When we get to the point here where um, these tracks, at least one of these tracks, doesn't matter which color, is full, we'll score, do this first scoring, right? Um, so obviously it depends on the citizens that uh, get placed out how quickly that's gonna happen. But like for instance, when we take our turn here, we're going to have to build a building somewhere here, right? Probably one of these ones um, on account of these two citizens being adjacent. That's the same as the cost. The thing that sucks about this is we don't gain any perks for this. These ones, we get to move up on that scoring track. These ones, we don't get anything. So. We may want to play over here so that we can build a building here, gain the five points, as well as moving up on the track. Might be worth it. Uh, which is great because it is our turn now. Our solo player constructed his stuff, did his actions, built a building, and he is now done. So we've got two green lower class, working class citizens here to place out on the board. Uh, getting rid of some of these cobblestone markers, probably a nice thing to do. Uh, just so we have more space in our warehouse. So we could potentially place here, we'd get rid of a cobblestone. We could also place out two more streets, which is for our first scoring here. Um, and that's gonna give us some additional points. We could maybe pick up this cloth because we know that this guy's gonna go mess with us and just yoink as many um, things off of the board as possible. Uh, so we might want to just preemptively take them. We could take like this cloth and this three points, for instance. I don't know if that's a good move, but we're going to try it. We're going to place our two citizens right there. T-Cat is buzzing off. Thanks for that lurk. Appreciate you, T-Cat. Also the sub. Thanks so much. Have a good lurk. I hope uh, to you. Ugh. Try that again. Have a good lurk. I hope we'll catch you back here in a little bit. All right. Now, we placed our two guys here. We get to do these actions in an order of our choosing. So we're going to place our cobblestone uh, first. I don't remember what we actually physically do with this. Do we just huck it aside? Or does it actually go somewhere? I don't think it does. Yeah.
Oh, that's right. Of course we don't huck it aside. Gosh, I'm being so silly. This is the first action I read about and I completely forgot. We get to place this cobblestone on this board here. Anywhere we like. Okay? And when we do, we gain the benefit depicted. But any remaining cobblestones are going to have to be placed uh, adjacent to the first one that we placed. Okay? So... Given this, like, we're trying to go hard on this, like, street scoring, I wonder if maybe we take another two streets, right? I think we're going to do that. Give it a try. Okay, so we place that out. Has to be orthogonally adjacent to an existing cobblestone. So that could be the other guy's as well. And I'm pretty sure this just lets us place two streets. It told me to look in the in the appendix and then the appendix doesn't actually tell us anything. We're putting out two streets. So, well, that also lets us advance on this one more time. Okay, I, I feel like I'm forgetting something here. Let's make sure we're doing this correctly. We put this out, placed out the cobblestone. We did that, it lets us place out two streets. All right, we wanted to gain this cloth. these three points because we desperately need the points and then I don't think we I don't know if we score those ones or not that would be a great thing to read in the appendix okay yeah so gain one VP for every connected street section in the straight line including the one you just placed that's really ambiguous. Do I score both? I think so. Let's just assume yes. So I'm going to earn three points for that and one point for that. Sweet. We're kind of maxed out on costs and stuff here. But then we also get to place out two additional narrow streets. We're actually going to be like out of streets to place before we know it. But I think we just try and like make a nice interconnected network. Oh, my camera is all screwed up, my bad. So I think we don't have room for anything. I mean, there are three points. Do we just, I mean, if I place this here, I earn four points for placing it. And then I can place this one down here and earn three points for placing it. And then we've got this nice network that's going to make moving our tram quite a bit easier. We'll earn, well, three points plus one and four points. So we're going to earn eight um, points for those street placements. We're actually tied. We tied it up. That's pretty okay. And then now we have to build a building if we can. So we're going to build this guy, right? It's a level one building, any two citizens. So this one and this one. We'll place them down here. Both working class. It's going to get us closer to scoring. We're going to move up on this track over here. One spot, flip this guy up. And then we're going to earn points equal to the lowest number of points showing. So two. And we are now briefly in the lead. We've played two turns to the bots one turn. So they're going to quickly catch up and probably horribly surpass us. But I feel like that went okay. Um, we're setting ourselves up to score quite a bit here for this guy. Um, 
so that's 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 pretty all right okay we also have to draw two citizens to replace can we continue our streak of samezy citizens oh oh no we cannot all right one middle class one upper class and it is the bot's turn so the bot will move I wish the priority were were listed here because I don't remember for their own intersection where they're able to construct a building or avoiding our intersections so obviously he doesn't have an intersection out and where he would be able to construct a building oh hey i forgot this we get this five points we were the first on that row bang okay so he would be able to construct a building well, let's read this again where he can his own intersection where he's able to construct a building and avoiding our intersections in that order so he can't achieve any of those in the area that he's in now so then we would move out to like a, you know, moving two spots, like a wider search. So if he moves to here and places citizens there, then he can construct a building here, right? So that's what he would try to do. Okay, then the actions he's gonna perform are the tram. Oh, I guess we gotta stack the citizens first. We draw two. Own building, not mine. What building? You have no marker to earn five. Oh, yeah. I flipped this because we had built, we had constructed this building last turn on that row to earn our five points. I just had forgotten to score it and forgotten to put my marker out because we did build that one building there. Okay, so he got two working class citizens. That's gonna, this means we're gonna end up scoring at the end of this turn. Okay, so he's gonna place them here. He's gonna ignore the, rows and we're going to do the actions shown here which i think means we play an additional turn which is kind of a pain in the butt just screw in with us let's see how his tram works so he places a passenger he avoids our streets and prioritizes his own streets but he doesn't have any okay so we'll use the arrow to determine where he would go, which is there. Ah, uh, I see. So when this is this is a combined thing. So when he places a passenger, normally when we place a passenger out by playing somewhere on this diagonal spot in order to get the tram action, we would then get to execute the action on that space. Instead of him executing the action on that space, we flip an additional card. So that's kind of, kind of yucky. Ooh, he's going to get an intersection. Okay. Let's see what his priority is for this. So, Tries to build adjacent to his meeple, never underneath. So he's going to try and gain the most rewards. So he would build here where his passenger is, right? Because that's going to get him up on this track as well as earning a coin, which is two points for him. And then if we take this spot, it's going to earn points for our friend now. Depending on how many intersections he's built. Currently, because he's only built one, he's just going to earn two points. Once he's built three intersections, 
anytime we place on any of them, he's going to earn four points, which is going to suck. Place the tram out too. I don't know if we actually use his tram figure. I mean, we can. Oh, ad break. I don't know. I don't think it matters. Kinky Binky, I love your name. I think you're in the middle of an ad break right now, but you're right. We're playing Barcelona here, and uh, this is uh, set in the mid 19th century. Barcelona growing. But I think you probably are behind an ad and can't hear anything I'm saying. So we'll wait a second. Welcome you in. Binky, welcome in. I like your uh, name a lot. <laughs> it's 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 fun to say. <laughs> so yeah, we're playing bar the Barcelona board game here, set in the uh, mid nineteenth century. Barcelona doing some unprecedented growth. We're playing the solo mode where we're getting our butt kicked by this bot, and. Uh, We're going to score. We just filled up. We just got a new new thing that hasn't happened to us yet in the game. So we filled up this citizen track here. Oh, this one's upside down. That just won't do. So now we get to score this um, tile on the track. We score it a number of times equal to our multiplier here. So we're going to actually score it three times. Only seven ads in a row. Wow. That's brutal. Yeah, the Twitch ad management is weird now. It's, um, people get a, uh, maybe it's not weird. I think they really improved it in terms of making it more like regional and, uh, targeted, but like, it seems very varied. Some people get no ads. Some people get one, others get five, you know, and it's like a two minute ad break, but it used to be that it was a two minute ad break and it was consistent for everyone. And now it seems like it's very sporadic. Some people it's 20 seconds long, other people it's two, two and a half minutes, you know, it's kind of goofy. Seven ads for you, wow, that's wild. Anyways, Kinky Binky, uh, welcome in. Have you, uh, are you, do you play board games? Have you, have you played Barcelona before, for instance? All right, so the way this scoring is going to work here, 
What did you figure out about the tram use? Oh, well, so I put his tram out on the board. It doesn't actually matter. He just arbitrarily sets out a passenger. Uh, Seth, it's, it's just like, you know, the typical bot thing. He just places one adjacent to his current spot um, uh, where he earns the most rewards. So he gained two points and uh, moved up on the track over here, the scoring track. And uh, he doesn't actually need to navigate with his tram like we do, unfortunately. Played some games, yes. Most recently, the White Castle. Cool, awesome. Do you have a favorite? Barcelona, this is my first time playing Barcelona. We're trying the solo mode here on stream today. It's been pretty interesting so far. Um, pretty interesting for sure. Pretty sure I'm gonna lose. That's how it tends to go. But we did get to an important moment here. We're doing the first of three scorings during this game. We're gonna score, do three kind of mid game or during the game scorings. And then at the uh, end of the game, there'll be a final scoring. So we're gonna score this objective here. So this one in this case is um, for having narrow streets out. So for us, we have one, two, three, four, five, six narrow streets on the board, and we're gonna score that three times. So we're gonna earn 18 points for all of our earlier uh, narrow streets abuse. And meanwhile, our friend the bot here, uh, I think he just scores them as we do, and we'll earn nothing. But let's, let's double check that that's true. Oh, he just ignores it, of course. So he earns, oh wow. Okay, here he earns one times three times two points because that's how many uh, we're playing on easy mode. He earns two points per scoring opportunity. So he's gonna earn an arbitrary six points but if it was like a tile, some of these tiles display five points and he would have uh, earned like 30 points for them. So yikes. Thankfully, we ended up quite randomly with easy tiles in that regard. Never played Barcelona. That's all right. Considering that most of the stream has been a setup, then yeah, interesting is the word you were looking for. Get out of here, Risto. Listen, I'm having a bad day, man. All right, cool. So the other thing we do for our scoring, we're gonna flip this down. We never score that again, even if these other tracks meet the end of their, uh, like the end of the markers here. Um, our markers on this track get reset. Okay, so our multiplier is now down back to, to one. Um, this is for having, we get earned two points per coin is our next scoring opportunity. Uh, to a maximum of five coins, even if we have more space than that. We can't have more than five coins. Um, there was one other thing I needed to do. What was it? Oh, and he shuffles his deck. So we reset his deck and we might redraw some of the tiles or cards rather that we've already got. All right, and then that means it is our turn. So we have absolutely kind of maxed out coffers here. We only have five spots in our uh, warehouse in order to store goods and money, right? We have two cloth and three coins. Annoyingly offset cut coin markers. Okay, so we are going to uh, want to spend some of those this turn, free up some space. We could also place out an additional um, cobblestone. That's not horrible, uh, you know, earning some more points or having some more space in our warehouse. And we also get bonus points at the end of the game for having placed out more cobblestones. And we get to earn a re reward over there. Now, a challenge is I'm not actually sure how effectively we can spend our money. We don't want really, we want to at least spend our cloth. We earn points for having uh, up to five coins in our coffers 
uh, for the next scoring opportunity, it's probably going to be a while, right? Because these tracks are hardly full at all. Uh, and unless we just happen to randomly draw only green workers from the bag, it's probably going to be probably going to be a few rounds before we uh, have an opportunity to actually uh, score. So I don't think we would need to be worried about spending our coins. We want to look for opportunities to actually do it, I think. So if we move our put out our tram, that's going to cost us uh, some money to place a passenger, but gets us a bonus action, also earns us bonus points at the end of the game. Uh, if we build an intersection, some of these intersections give us perks and also cost us uh, money in order to, to place the intersections out. And generally gaining improvements here is going to cost us, we're going to need money soon. We just don't really need it right now right so where where oh where do we want to go also i want to just look at this sagrada action is the only way for us there's got to be another way for us to move up on that Oh, you know what? It's building the level two buildings. That's what'll do it, right? The level two buildings uh, cost a middle class worker and any worker, and that causes us actually to move down on the scoring track here. Our multiplier potentially gets lower, uh, but also earn lets us move up on the Sagrada uh, track, which will let us potentially pick up one of these tiles and earn a reward now the level two buildings i presume we can only build a level two building on our own level one building but i'm making that up so You can build any level of building on an empty space. You don't have to always start with a level one. But you have to build a building if you can. Okay, so what we don't want to do is play in the top half of the board here, allowing uh, our AI bot to get these five-point bonuses uh, by placing citizens up there. That's going to suck. So we probably want to avoid doing that. So we probably want to play, you know, somewhere down here if there's satisfying actions that we can do. Um, so we could potentially um, build, uh, get in, gain another intersection. Uh, that wouldn't be, you know, terrible. It would also let us put out our tram, right? If we went here, we can uh, build an inter intersection, which can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be here. But we'd also get to put out our tram and we'd move up on this track. I think that's our move. Let's try it. And we can also build a building, right? So we're going to put these guys out. I think we can we can just choose the order. Um, so let's build an intersection. So our next one down here is going to cost us a dollar to build. And then we get to choose where we place it, but we gain the adjacent rewards for it, right? Which is interesting because like a spot like this, oh, he covered it up. That's right. Uh, we don't have space for more than one money. So like up here would be just be a waste. Um, we could potentially move up on this track. That's never going to be, 
a terrible thing, or we do have space for cloth. I just don't know if we can actually spend it fast enough. Like if we build in an intersection here, do we have anywhere for that for that cloth to go? I don't know. Let's try here. So that costs us one additional money. And then we move up one on this track and we gain one cloth and three points. I didn't actually see the points there. All of those are good things. We like those. Um, <clears throat> normally now when, when we've, when we control these intersections and someone, uh, places on them, we get to pick, if we have one intersection, we get to pick one of the rewards that we've uncovered on our board here in order to take, right? And then once we've got two, uh, intersections or sorry, three intersections, we get to pick any two rewards that are different. And when we have all five, we get to pick any three rewards. So it gives us an opportunity to gain some kind of money or point income. But the bot basically never places on our spots, right? And I don't know if when if we place on our own intersection, if we get the benefit, I think the answer is actually yes, but Whenever citizens are placed on your intersection. <laughs> All right. So we can go here and get coins and additional coins if we want, for instance. It's cool. All right. So we placed out our intersection. We also get to move up two on this track. So we're now up into the times two multiplier section. That's cool. And we get to do our tram action for the first time. So this is going to cost us our last coin. Um, so we get to place for the first one. We get to put our little tram here anywhere on the board that we want. Okay. And then we get to take um, a corresponding action, right? But we have to pay the cost of the passenger as well as the cost shown on the street, if there is one. So, hmm, where do we want to go? I just uh, re uh, reread the best setup is this one. What do you mean, like camera setup? Um, I just reread the passenger rules just to make sure I get this correct. So we get to put our tram out anywhere we want on the board. Okay. Now, when we do so, we get to place a passenger if we want. If we can pay the cost, it costs one money, which we have, and then we get to optionally take the action. Uh, shown okay so we're placing them on the street so if we're if we're here we're taking this action right we're not actually in these intersections so we don't get both actions we get just the single action okay so if we want one of these actions we would have to place the tram on a column if we want one of these actions we would place them on the street now when we place the passenger um, we also, if we put the passenger out on a street, we score as though we had just placed that street tile. So if we put a passenger down here, we're going to get to put out two more street tiles. And additionally, 
we're going to earn four points. So that's as good of a place to start as any. Um, so I think we will just start at the end of the row here, right? Just drop a little passenger here. Costs us a coin to do it. Okay, because there was a coin marked on our passenger. And then we get to take, or we earn four points as though we had just placed that street tile. And then we get to place two additional uh, narrow street tiles. Now, narrow streets aren't gonna score. Again, that scoring opportunity is, is gone, but they do score when they're placed and we can potentially pick up some stuff by doing so. Additionally, we wanna spend some of this cloth soon. So moving up our marker on here would allow us to spend some cloth uh, the next passenger allows us to spend some cloth. Enjoy the rest of your night. Have fun. Thanks for jumping in. I'll see you. Mosaic was the longest game I've ever set up. Ever. Ever. But yeah, Seth, thanks for hanging out. Okay, so street tiles... Uh, earn us the reward that we cover up. There's not a lot of rewards left other than cloth. And I don't know what to do with the cloth, honestly. Uh, we have so much and we want to be collecting coins. So I don't want to pick up more cloth. But we can put our street here. That gives us a coin. Okay, and we score one point for it. And then we can place our other street just somewhere else where either we can take the other coin here, which can't be bad, or yeah, or we can, and we'd earn one point, or we can not take a coin and we can earn two points. Let's take the coin. I don't know what I'm doing. And we earn another point for that because there's one street in that row. Okay, so... We did our action here, we did our action there, and we did our action here, the tram. So we're done now. Now we have to build a building if we can, and we can right down here. So we're gonna use these two folks. We're gonna build one of these little corner buildings. Oh, I just knocked my tram over, horrible. We don't get any perks for these corner buildings, which is a shame. Uh, but we still do earn points equal to the lowest number shown. So we're gonna earn four points, okay? And then we draw two more citizens from the bag. And it is our AI's turn. So what's he gonna do? He's gonna move up on the Sagrada track and he's going to increase um, one of these. I assume he increases the first one. There's also a weird arrow on the bottom. I don't know if that means he does anything else. The arrow's just a reminder. I guess we should have... Uh, I executed on those, but he should have moved first and placed citizens, right? He was He's always going to move to where he can build a building. So he's going to move here to where, um, or I guess, no, he's going to move here because he can build a building either here or here. And the tiebreaker says he's going to move up. Additionally, he's going to place citizens on his own intersection, which is going to earn him points. So we're going to pick two random citizens out of the bag. He always puts the more expensive ones towards the top. I'm going to place them here. Okay. Anytime citizens go on your intersection, um, you get to pick a reward. So... His reward, I guess he doesn't get points, but he gets to move up one on the scoring track here. Hard to fit all these things on the, the actual intersection tile, so we're not going to bother. Um, so we placed those citizens. He moved up on the Sagrada track. 
he moved up on one of his scoring tracks here, and then he's going to build a building here. He always has a preference in terms of what building uh, he builds, and he was quite fortunate in that he can build one of these ones. He wants to build level three buildings if he can, if not level two, and so on. Why, why are all these upside down? It's irritating. Um, so he's gonna build a level two building. Okay, because he needs a middle class citizen and a working class citizen in order to do that. So it's gonna go here and he's gonna move up one more on the Sagrada track. That's gonna earn him seven points, okay? Normally we would move down on the scoring track here, but the bot does not ever move backwards. So we're just gonna ignore that. He's got three buildings to our one. Additionally, he's going to earn four points for having built a building. Barcelona, Luza, welcome in. Oh my God, a raid. Jesus, how did I miss that? Man, it has been a day. Thanks so much for that raid. Welcome in. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe I uh, I was just uh, head down playing this bot turn and I, and I missed it there. I'll give you a shout out quickly here. Uh, for those of you in chat, if you don't follow Luza, you should. They uh, play tons of great board games and have just like a super welcoming, inviting space. Also, they're nice friends of the channel. Uh, I feel like Luza raids, raids in here more than anyone else and I genuinely appreciate it. So thanks so much. Um, we're giving uh, Barcelona a try here today. Also, I should say, for those of you who don't know me, I'm James Opcost. We play board games here. We play usually physical games on the table 99% of the time. Uh, so if you like playing board games, uh, I'd, I'd love to earn your follow today. And uh, today we're playing Barcelona. So uh, I've been playing the solo version of this game and uh, it's been it's been really interesting so far. What were you guys up to, Luza? What game are we losing today? Caffeinated miniatures, Jared, welcome in. I missed you. I haven't been harassed enough. Uh, and yeah, I'm actually currently winning at Barcelona, but I will say, admittedly, we are playing on the easiest difficulty because this is my first play. And uh, I'm anticipating that I will lose, <laughs> but uh, so far so good. We did well on our first scoring objective and uh, hopefully we can, we can keep that up. Playing through my island with people at home. Cool, nice, nice. Well, uh, I don't know if you guys have played Barcelona before. Um, I am playing it for the first time here today, and I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, for those of you who haven't played this, Barcelona is like essentially kind of like a worker placement, but it's a bit of an unusual one in that uh, your workers are citizens moving into the city of Barcelona that are drawn from this, this bag here. I'm like We get two every turn that we're gonna place out. And uh, we place them on uh, an intersection in the city here. And then unlike most worker placements where you're going to place workers out and then take like a corresponding action, this is like a grid, right? So if I place them here, I'm gonna take the action shown in that column as well as in the row. And then if it's in the center, the diagonal section, I also get to take this action as well. So potentially you're executing, or not even potentially, you're always executing multiple actions. You have to be able to do them. And we're largely uh, kind of building up the city of Barcelona. So these citizens represent people who are moving to the city. And as we place them, uh, we're gonna end up constructing buildings throughout the city, uh, as well as building up the streets uh, with intersections and this tram that's gonna take passengers all over and all sorts of things. It's really a lovely little game so far and uh, really enjoying it. I get stomped on the regular, you're in good company. Yeah, that's that's all right. I mean, it happens, it happens. Well, so far we are sitting here at a cool 55 points. Our bot opponent is at 38. Um, so as these citizens move into the city, they're, we're gonna uh, kind of fill up these citizen tracks down here, which represent uh, kind of scoring phases throughout the game. 
So we've completed our first scoring phase. Uh, there'll be two more and then a final scoring, right? So coming up eventually here, probably a couple more turns, definitely a couple more turns, we're going to score some points for having uh, lots of coins in our warehouse down on our player board way down here. It's hard to fit this game on, on screen, honestly. And then later on, we're going to uh, score some points for having built uh, wide roads, wide streets out in Barcelona, which we have not done whatsoever so far. So we're going to keep working towards that. And I think we had just finished resolving the bot's turn, and thus it is, it is our turn. This is the, our friendly bot opponent here, this little, little meeple. He's going to move around to various spots uh, and just generally get in our way, uh, which is not fabulous, honestly. Now, an interesting thing here is we have a couple uh, intersections that we've, um, that we've constructed. And when we place on our own intersection, we get a bonus action, right? Uh, even though we own it, whether the bot or uh, ourselves place on it, we get a little bonus. So I think we might want to do that. Uh, we are really trying to look for opportunities to spend cloth, though. So maybe that won't work out. We have in our warehouse down here, we've got three cloth and two money. We need we can place out these cobblestones in order to have more space in our warehouse, but so far we really we've only done that one time. So we're kind of we're kind of tapped out. We can't really gain a lot of resources. So we probably need to look for opportunities to spend those resources. Now, if we move our tram here, our next passenger is going to cost us some cloth. And if we do this little upgrade action, we can also uh, spend some cloth that way. So we got a couple, uh, a couple options, I guess. I'm just not, I don't know, I don't know. All right, so we want to build, there's a citizen here. Ideally, we would really like to build a building in this row. Building buildings, that's a weird thing to say. Constructing buildings allows us to uh, earn some points. And the first building in a row gets us five additional points. So we have an opportunity because uh, we need citizens in at least a couple of intersections in order to construct a building. And there's one sitting right here. So I think we probably, I think we're gonna go on this spot. We don't get the bonus from going on our own, um, our own intersection, but we will have an opportunity to spend some cloth and construct a building, both of which are really good actions for us. So let's give that a try. So uh, I put out my two citizens out here, and then I can resolve these two actions in any order I like. So this allows me to take a scoring tile from the four available on this board here, and this allows me to uh, move up one of the markers on my board so that those scoring tiles will score more points, essentially. So let's take a look here. What do we got at the top? Uh, we have, geez, those are hard to see from here. And I'm not actually sure what they all mean. First playthrough. So uh, forgive me for looking at the, the appendix here. So what do we got? We're going to... get two points per uh, our multiplier on the uh, track here. That one seems, I don't know if I, uh, we can do that consistently. We're gonna earn points for connected uh, or per wide street we've placed on the board. We've placed zero presently, so that's iffy. That's this guy here. That, I do not see in the reference anywhere. What is that guy? Oh, there it is. Three points per passenger that you've placed 
on the main board that is adjacent to at least two buildings. Well, we've got at least one of those already uh, on the board and we can potentially uh, get some more of those because we've built our little tram down here and there's lots of buildings down here. So let's take that one. Take this guy. I think we have to fill these out left to right, I believe. But um, this is the first time I've taken that action, so let's double check. But we put it on any one of our spaces. If it has a cost, we have to pay it uh, immediately. So the significance of that, I guess, is that this represents a scoring opportunity, right? We have three points, um, but we can potentially do it uh, multiple times, right? Looks like we can score it up to twice, maybe. Anyways, uh, as we, uh, we, when we place one of these, if I put this here, it wouldn't cost me anything additionally to place it. I just get to place it. I'm gonna earn three points per, uh, dude that's adjacent to at least two buildings, okay? And I'm gonna score that one time, but I have the opportunity to potentially move this up and then I get to score it twice. Now, the spots further on the board here, instead of scoring it twice, I can score it uh, like three or even four times, right? So I think maybe we have a bunch of cloth. We kinda wanna use that cloth up, so Maybe I place this here. That's going to cost me one cloth to do. That's all right. And then with my other action, oh, I should zoom out. With my other action here, I get to raise one of these markers. So let's just do this one right now. And I get to spend my other two cloth in order to do that. So now I'm going to score this three times. So currently it's worth at least nine points and it's nine points for every additional passenger we manage to place out on the board who's adjacent to two buildings. That's, uh, that's pretty big, that's pretty big. The best place in the world, Barcelona. Wow, Smarty's very excited about Barcelona. Well, it wouldn't be the best if there wasn't a stream about it. Appreciate that, appreciate that. I'm really enjoying this game so far. Uh, it's, um, it's a little visually busy, but in a way that's kind of satisfying anyway so that's kind of cool now we've done both of our actions right we took a tile and we upgraded one of our things so now it is mandatory to build a building if we can and we set this up in a particular way because um the type of building we'd like to get is this one this is a level two building there's level one, two, and three. Um, level one, just any two citizens can construct the building, but you can only ever take at most one from a given intersection. So there has to be at least two spots with citizens present, right? Now this one is a level, whoops, is a level two building. So you can see on this one that we have two citizens, but one of which has to be middle class. So when we were placing our citizens out earlier, I put one here that's a middle class citizen. So we can do a level two building instead of a level one. We do not have to upgrade them or work along. We can build any building we want onto an empty spot. So we're gonna take this uh, middle class citizen and place it here. We're gonna take this working class citizen and place it here. And we're gonna put our building out and claim all the rewards. So this is the first building on this row. That means we earn five points nice additionally we're gonna get to move up one on our sagrada track and we lose one on our multiplier over here okay so the sagrada track is down on our player board that is my reason why barcelona is the best in the world because there's a stream about it i like your reason okay so we're gonna move up one on the sagrada track here and because we crossed over this little threshold we actually get to pick one of these Sagrada tiles. Now, there's only a couple options in the solo game. So we get to pick, this is like the level one uh, spot. So we get to pick one of these. We're either gaining three points and either a cloth or a coin, or we're gaining 
both of the resources, but no points. I think we're going to go with the points and a coin because we want to set ourselves up to have lots of coins. That's the scoring uh, opportunity for our, our next one. And normally we would place this here, but there just is not enough space on my table. So we're not going to do that this time. Instead, we're just going to keep it off to the side here. Score our three points. Oh, there's an ad break. And take a coin. Now, additionally, because we built a building, we also earn four more points. We earn whatever the lowest value shown is. And we're gonna put this guy out on that building that we own, and we get to move up on this track. All right, it is our bot's turn. So our bot, our friendly bot player, we're going to flip this card. He gets to get an intersection. So. Let's take a look in the rule book because he's going to care. It's going to matter how he moves here. So he wants to construct an intersection, or a building rather, if at all possible. But he wants to do so avoiding our tiles, which I think means he's going to end up moving to here, right? Well, he won't be able to build a building there either, though. Hmm. Okay, let's see. All right. So he wants to build a building above all else. If he can build a building anywhere on the board, he will do so. He can build a building down here. So that means that's the only spot available where he can build uh, a building. These are level two buildings, and he needs at least three citizens to upgrade them to level three, which he won't be able to achieve on his own turn. Ooh, I'll put favorite picture I took in Barcelona in the Discord. You can see why building might not be too good. Yeah, sure. So I don't know anything about Barcelona, but in reading about this, it was saying essentially about how Barcelona was like walled off, had a limited size and was the most population dense uh, city in Europe at the time of the expansion that we're kind of going through as part of this game. All right, so our bot is gonna move down here and place out his citizens. Uh, Cause then he can build into this spot here. And he always puts the more expensive ones on top. Now he's going to take a build an intersection action. So he tries to build one um, adjacent and he tries to get the most benefits. So that means he's gonna build here because he moves up on the track and gains a cloth, right? I don't think he ever builds uh, yeah, never where he's, his meeple is. So he gets to take an intersection tile, place it here. Uh, normally we would collect these rewards, but for him, every time he gains cloth, he just earns two points, okay? But he will still move up on the track. He's now gonna earn twice, I don't know. Oh yeah, we don't actually do the scoring for it. He just earns a bunch of points. So that multiplier is gonna be worth a bunch of points for him. He'll be a... Uh, a happy boy. All right. And that's all he's going to do. Uh, now he'll build a building. So uh, he can build this little corner building. So he's going to use this. And this. He's going to place out one of these. These do not have any special benefits. 
other than always building building uh, buildings is worth points. So he's going to place this one here, and then he earns the number of points on the lowest uncovered spot. So seven points now. We are getting a comfortable lead, but we'll see if we can maintain that. We'll see if we can maintain that. Also, I'm going to take a quick look. Let's see if Risto posted this picture in the Discord. I won't be able to pull it up on screen, but I will see. Oh, hey, TCAT, you joined the Discord. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Uh, <laughs> this is your favorite picture of Barcelona? Risto, it's a pipe going through a window or a door or something. I'm assuming it's a window. Uh, why? <laughs> is this like... I, I don't know. That just seems... There's some context missing there that I don't understand. There was no other way to do it, but instead of, like, making the window shorter, they just, like, busted it? Or, or what? Like, that's, that's weird. I'd love to understand what the heck we think is going on there. All right, so... Uh, buildings are now worth quite a few points, seven points each. If you build a level three building, it's also seven points, so it'd actually be 14. Uh, but they're quite hard to get. I think they'll naturally come out later because once some of these spots are covered, then the citizens will accumulate because we need three in order to build a level three building. Um, so it's our turn. I'm realizing now that I forgot to draw citizens on my last turn, or I accidentally used them for him, but whatever. We'll get those out. And uh, where do we wanna go? What do we wanna do? So scoring isn't necessarily kind of super close, right? When one of these tracks is full, we're gonna score this one. We want to have five coins. That's 10 points multiplied by whatever we are at on the track. I, we could easily get to three, maybe not easily, but we can probably get to three. Four seems unlikely, but 30 points is no joke. So we wanna earn some additional coins and we don't have any cloth remaining to spend. So we can't use our tram action, um, but we can probably find some coins somewhere. It wouldn't hurt us to have a little bit more space in our warehouse, like this cobblestone action would be really nice. And also we know that our final action, our final scoring thing here is for placing the wide streets. So we might wanna take this wide street action sometime before never, right? Like if we went here, we would gain two coins and place out a wide street. Not terrible. Um, we could place that wide street here. We'd move up on the track and earn four points for it. Let's give that a go. We don't, unfortunately, we are kind of setting ourselves up to him building a building, which is a shame. But I don't think that that's really largely avoidable. So let's just do it. That was my thing. Why would they do this? I need context as well. Okay, so nobody understands. We just don't understand what's happening in this photo. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, I will not be able to pull it up, but Risto did post it on the Discord. Uh, I'll drop the link for the socials here if you want to join. Please, uh, please do. And um, yeah, I don't understand what's happening in that photo. Like, it just like... I get it. There's a pipe that needs to be, you know, maneuvered through this narrow space, but how they got to that being the solution, I'm not sure I understand. So anyhow, moving on. Okay. The other thing I guess to consider here is do we need cloth? Because if we're maxed out on coins and we just don't have any way of storing cloth or anything like that, that might not be a great place to be. Um, I don't know. Let's just do this anyway. We'll figure out the, what could go wrong. We'll figure out the cloth thing later. So we're gonna place our guys over here. Uh, we get to place out a wide street. 
and we also get to um, earn two points. So we're going to put that wide street, I think, right here. Early. Is there any better perk we can get elsewhere? I don't think so. We need to move up once on this track. And uh, we earn points equal to all the wide streets in that uh, row or column or diagonal, whatever. So we're going to earn two points for each one. So four points. Uh, and then we gain two coins. So we're maxed out here. And then we have to build a building if we can, but we can't currently. So we will not. Uh, so our bot gets to take a turn. Oh, hey, before that, let's remember, I get to draw two citizens for my next turn. All right, so our bot's gonna take a turn. So he is gonna look for the closest spot available to him where he can build a building. Now, I think he might be able to build a level two building here, potentially, because he needs at least one middle-class citizen. He always puts these out in a particular way, but he got the same ones. But if he goes here, um, he could build, I guess this actually raises an important question. Can you build over top of your opponent's buildings or not? It was something that wasn't well addressed in the rules, but I feel like, you know, the, the obvious answer would be no, <laughs> right? Um, but let's see. Let's see if there's like a FAQ or something. Of course there isn't, because that would be too easy. And I did try to look for this in the rules, but I didn't see it generally. Um, Let's just let's just look back in here. I think the answer surely is no, right? Like why else would we mark them with our own thing? It wouldn't make sense. So yeah, let's just go with we're gonna we're gonna go with no unless I re have a revelation in the first thing here. It doesn't actually say that. It just says you must construct a building either on an empty block or on top of an already built building. I would imagine it would tell me that that would be when, like, that. that's where it would say your own building or something like that, right? So I guess uh, I suppose we can just... Yeah, when placing your building marker, place it on top of the markers already pre present, preserving the order. Okay, so we can build on someone else's building. So, weird, but okay. Hey, thanks for that follow. Trombone, welcome back. Unlurking just to scold me about posture. I need it. I appreciate you. All right. Let's... Uh, yeah, so we know that he's going to build a level two building here then, right? Um, so he's going to move his meeple to this spot here. He'll place out his two uh, upper class citizens. And then he is going to... Oh, I didn't flip one of these out. Ah! He is going to, I suppose this means take one of the... Uh, modernism projects
Ah. Okay, so he's gonna take this one, I see. And he puts it on the furthest right spot. So he's getting the, he's filling up his more valuable spots uh, immediately. So he's gonna take the one for having large roads, of which he has one. And then <coughs> he is going to uh, construct a building. That moment when you almost forgot to turn off your alarm, when you don't need to wake up at 5 a.m. Uh, it's funny because Martina often works really early and um, like she and I, I guess we don't have opposite schedules. In an ideal world, we would have opposite schedules because I love staying up late. But um, she often uh, works, at, like has to be at work at 5.30 a.m. Uh, so she gets up like an hour earlier than that. Probably more than an hour earlier than that. And like uh, lately I've been waking up when she gets up and I hate it. It's just, it's awful. I do not care for it. Not one little bit. Also, I've realized something that was a mistake that we made earlier that we're just going to live with. But this passenger that I placed on the board needs to be on a street and he is on an intersection. So that wouldn't have been a thing. Um, I think we would have actually earned points or something. He would have placed it on our street. Anyway, whatever. We're just going to leave it there. As soon as there's a street here, we'll just scooch it over. Um, but, oh well. Okay, so he took a modernism tile. And uh, he's now going to build a building. So we're going to get a level two building here, right? They have to have at least one middle class citizen and one of any other one so this upper class citizen will work okay and he's going to uh gain all of the benefits here so he's going to move up one on the sagrada i don't think i scored that we're just going to assume i didn't because he's way behind i'm going to flip them so that i know i might have who knows uh he never moves back on that track so he doesn't have to kind of suffer the consequences and we get to put his marker on top of this. We move him up on this and he'll earn an additional seven points. Pretty much opposite. I enjoy it once I'm out of bed. Got to get up early to work in your current dumpster fire. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm just not going to address that. Uh, all right, so he built his building. We gave him his points. Uh, he's done. So what do we want to do now? We have five money. Um, I think we want to build a building up here. For sure we want to, if we can, because we can earn that additional five points. Now, unfortunately, I think we don't have space. It's the problem we thought we were going to have. And if we uh, mess this up, our friend is going to stroll in and get a level three building, which would be brutal. Uh, but yeah, ways we can build a building. We can't play on this row because we would need money uh, or need we would gain money and we need to be able to execute the action. We are tapped out. The only way we could do that is if we have some other way that involves spending a bunch of money. Um, this one could work. Building in our next intersection is going to cost us two money, and we would then gain that money back. If we could do that and then build a uh, building there, that's not a horrible idea. We want to be maxed out on money, and we want that bonus five points. We could build a level two building as well. Um, which would increase us on the Sagrada track a little bit more as well. It would move us out of this times three multiplier, but we'll probably get one more turn or two more turns to move that back up. So I think we can, let's do that. I'm gonna put this here, okay. So we need to build an intersection. Where do we want this intersection to go? 
um, places that where we're going to take actions so that we can gain benefits is probably where we know we need more cobblestones. We also know we need more um, large buildings. So, you know, one of those near one of those would be good. And then we also get the benefits shown beside it. So we don't want these coins, right? Um, we don't really need this action either anymore. Though this one's never going to be bad. This intersection kind of screwed us. I think probably we go here because we want to build large roads and points is never going to be bad. I think that's where we want to go. So, is there an extra cost here? No, there is not, but we needed to pay two coins for that one. However, we're then going to earn those two coins back, okay? And we do get the three points from beside there. And that's it, we built an intersection, we gained our coins, and now we can build a building and we can build a level two building. So it lets us increase on the Sagrada track. We do not get a reward just yet. It's going to cost us these two fine folks. Puts us pretty close to scoring soon. The upper class citizens are lagging behind and we do move down one on our scoring track. But now we score seven points for having built a building. And we're pretty happy. Pretty happy. So let's uh, gra grab two more citizens. And it's our bot's turn. What's he going to do? Oh, the, the tram action that we, we love. So where can he go? that's closest to him where he can build an intersection or build a build a building. Um, well, that's kind of goofy. <laughs> okay. Um, so he could move here and build a building or he could move here and build a building. So those are both within one spot of him. So we would use the tiebreaker, which is the diagonal arrow to go here, so that doesn't help us, but I think we then rotate it clockwise. Believe. Yes, rotating clockwise. So he would in fact go here, which is suboptimal for him, but we're gonna do it anyway. Bed is the best thing when you have to wake up early, though. Not at all as sweet when you try to go to sleep early. Not sure it made sense. It makes sense in Estonian. Like staying in bed and being warm and happy instead of getting out of bed into the cold miserableness that is existence. I don't know. Welcome in, Akali. <laughs> Alkali? Why did I say Akali? Too much League of Legends. I was watching uh, the world's semifinals last night, and that's absolutely why I said that 100%. But welcome in, Alkali. Hope you're doing well. We're playing some Barcelona here today. All right, so we get the... Do you have a time-lapse motor or something on the close-up view? I sure do. I got a little motorized slider. So we get a little bit, uh, just a slow panning shot, just to create some, some visual interest. And when it's been up on our overhead cam for about 10 minutes, it switches to that just for a little while, uh, just automatically, just to, uh, you know, make things easy for me and keep things. As Ray was in earlier and I was telling her, cause I figured naturally she would understand as someone who's streamed board games. Board game streams are like the least visually interesting thing on the planet. I want to have it be 
clear. I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing uh, and we can talk about it and so on. But like compared to a video game, like I'm not I'm not playing freaking Overwatch or something and all kinds of stuff's going on. It's just sort of 90% of the frame doesn't change over the course of two hours, right? Me likey. I haven't seen any other board gamey stuff like that. Well, thank you. I'm I'm pretty happy with how it's uh, how it's worked out actually, and I do think it adds a bit of just a little bit of visual interest. It also lets it you know it's it's functional for me too if I just want to like you know show off a card or something. It's a lot easier for me to do. It's moving, but like whatever, it still it still works. So yeah, kind of fun. I think you make it very easy to see the game with what you have set up. Yes, awesome. This is validating. Man, I've been getting camera compliments lately and it has been feeling good because I care a lot about the visual quality of the stream. I think it's one of the things that, um, you know, presently most games on Twitch, I go to watch a board game stream and I would say a comfortable half of them, I can't tell what the hell is going on because it's just sort of like a blurry mess, right? Or half the components aren't on the screen or whatever. So I really want to, uh, I want to do better than that. Like I've said in the past, um, I feel like a, a, a significant number of board game streams are, well, I was playing a board game, so I turned a camera on and I don't want that vibe here. I want it to be like, you can see, we can talk about stuff, you know, I don't know. I like, I like it being quality. All right. So Let's uh, not get too distracted here. Let's do this. This is the weird action, the, uh, the passenger action. So he places his next passenger on a street space adjacent to his meeple with no other passengers. Prioritizing his own streets. Okay, so he's only placed one street. So let's fix this. This guy would have been down here from the first time and we gave him the benefit anyway and then he would have to place on one of our streets right so he's gonna put this here on that one and then i believe that means we score as though we had placed that if that scoring tile or street had just been placed. So we're going to score four points. Thank you, friend. And then he's going to take the action shown on the next thing here. I legit can't see 90% of what board game streams show. You absolutely don't have that vibe. I love tuning into your streams for the board games as you absolutely make the game easy to tell what's going on. And I love it. But anyways, how are you doing today? Wow. Well, thank you for that compliment. I appreciate you, Alkali. And uh, honestly, I was having a pretty rough day. Uh, you know, we are, what, three hours into this stream and uh, the first, comfortably, the first hour and a half was me struggling with technical, technical, uh, technology issues, speaking, apparently, <laughs> getting this game set up. It was just, I was having a bit of a day. Uh, everything that could go wrong did. And uh, it's been better. It's been better. Risto's been cheering me up in chat. Uh, and, uh, this game has been actually really interesting to play so far. And overall, it's been a good time, but man, it was a rough start. How about you? How you doing? All right. So we flipped out the next card, uh, cause he gets to execute this action, which is going to be to place two narrow streets. That's the first time he's done that. So we'll have to figure out how the bot actually does that and move up on one of those scoring things. It's interesting. He moves up. He increases the multiplier from left to right, but adds the tiles right to left. So potentially he's increasing the multipliers of things he's not going to score, which feels weird. But anyway, let's see how the bot places out his, uh, his streets. Well, that's unfortunate, but I'm glad to hear it's been getting better. It's way better. It was just like, you know, we've all been there. It was just one of those days where it was like nothing. It felt like nothing was going my way.
Okay, so he's gonna build adjacent to his meeple wherever possible, and that, like as close as possible, but um, taking rewards essentially. I should have not put this away. So he's going to only check further away if he can't build a street, not if there's no reward. So um, he could build two streets here, but he could also within um, one space of his meeple, he could build here and here, right? So he'll gain cloth and money. Each time he gains those, it's two points, so he'll gain four points for those. And then for placing streets, you earn points equal to however many other streets or streets total there are in that column or row. I said those backwards, column or row. So he's gonna earn two points for this street and one point for that street. So another three points. And then he is all done. Uh, and it's our turn. So. Interestingly, uh, there is a build a level four building angle here for us potentially, right? Because, or level three rather, there are two citizens on the board here and we need at least one to be upper class. There already is one and we have one anyway. So if we take one of these two spaces, we can uh, get a level free building, which is going to be worth, uh, we could make it be worth nine, 16 points and two on the Sagrada track. So we get a Sagrada tile as well, but we lose two on our multiplier here. So it's like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna score it this turn. Oh, hey, I forgot to do his building, whoops. Okay, let's, let's fix that first. It's been good today. Definitely didn't pirate some TV shows and I'm now working on a foundry macro to make it so I can roll initiative for my characters in combat easier. Cool. 16, 16 points sounds like a lot. Well, in, you know, half the game so far, we're at 85. So 16 feels like pretty good. Not bad, but I did forget our friend here is going to build a building. That's why he moved to this spot. So he's going to take these two and place them down here. He's going to build one of these sad little corner buildings that's not as lucrative um but he still earns nine points for it which i neglected to score him whoops so he's actually catching up to us which feels weird i did give him those extra seven points that i think i probably scored that twice by mistake but nonetheless yeah i gotta not cheat it's true it's true Listen, I'm very used to losing in this game, or not this game, but on stream. And uh, I try to at least be be reasonable about it. Oh, hey, speaking of not cheating, we cheated ourselves out of these points, these five for building, being the first building on this road. Jeez, getting too distracted with chat and forgetting uh, everything ever, basically. Okay, so I think we actually have to be a little bit clever here because we're getting really close to this scoring. So building a, uh, like if, if, we, if we move up one on this track, we get to this three multiplier and that's worth 10 points, right? So building a 16 point building and then, um, it doesn't actually affect our multiplier, but it potentially it probably stops us from getting those 10 points, right? We can always do that next round. He is going, he's, he's going to move. There's a building that he can build down here somewhere. Probably. Um, so, hmm. Okay, let's, let's think this out. Let's think this out. Also, if we could just get up to this four times multiplier and get 40 points for that. That wouldn't be horrible. This spot down here gets us two increases, but I don't know where we would find. Oh, I also didn't put out a marker. God, I am just neglecting so many things. And there's a fly harassing me out of nowhere. That's weird. 
Um, okay. Hmm. How are we going to do this? We want to build that big, big boy building. We would have to build on one of these two spots. So we're either, um, uh, placing out an intersection, which we cannot do because we can't afford it. So we would have to go on this spot, which would mean that we are, um, placing out a large road, which would be good for us. And then gaining a cloth, which we cannot do because we don't have, uh, any space. So we actually cannot get that, 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 uh, big sexy building over there. What a shame. Okay, so maybe what we want to do then is we want to build over here and just get a level two building in order to deny him from getting the level three building. That's probably better. So, uh, how are we going to achieve that? This also lets us make our warehouse bigger. Get rid of one of these cobblestones. So that feels like definitely the play. Uh, we don't have room for money. We don't, I mean, if we, we could go here and we would have room for that cloth as soon as we get rid of the cobblestone. That's probably the right move. I really wish we were using our own intersections more, but we're just kind of loaded on stuff. We don't have space for it. So, all right. Oh, but if we go on that top spot, we can't build a building either. And then he definitely can build a building. Crap. <laughs> okay. All of my plans have failed. It's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster. Okay. So let's, let's, let's do this in a more clever way. We can go on this spot, which allows us to get rid of a cobblestone. It allows us to increase one of our things, which probably has a cost associated with it. And because we're placing on our own thing, we can take two benefits here. So we could gain a cloth in order to pay for an upgrade or something like that. And then we still don't get to build a building but we're freeing up some space in the where. Oh wait, we could build one here. Okay. And then he's going to end up going here instead of over to that distant spot. So he won't get the big, the big boy level three building. We won't absolutely screw our multiplier over and we can thus be happy with what we've achieved in life or something like that. So, if we put this, um, this guy out, like, thusly, we can get a level 2 building there. That's not going to change our multiplier. We'll still be at uh, 2 times. We want to be at 3, but I just don't think it's going to happen for us. We would have to play into this corner down here. Actually... God, is that just a better move? Man, I'm getting some, like, legit analysis paralysis here now. Um, there are a lot of options later on in this game. I'm almost... James is out here making us all feel better about getting our butts handed to us in games. Hey! Hey! Jared, come on! I'm almost through my bottle of wine. Almost forgot this game is going. Listen, listen, Risto. I don't know. Okay, so look. If I forgo building a building, I'm saying that again and it's making me angry. Forgo in constructing a building, I could get. I could get up, I can move up three on this thing, right? If I go here, I can put out a large road, which lets me cover up, like, say, this spot and gain 
one on the track. I also get two more over here. So I'd be at the times four multiplier. There is an ad. I'm trying to talk to people and there's an ad. I hate you, Twitch. I hate you. I hate you. Anyway. I would get up to the times four multiplier, which is worth 20 points to me. That's pretty big. The challenge, of course, is that then I would be enabling him to get a level 3 building, which I don't want to do, because he doesn't suffer. He just gets all the good stuff and none of the, none of the, none of the penalty, you know? I had an epiphany, a set intense deciding, intense de <laughs> deciding intensifies. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Uh, I'm new to this game and I'm, I'm struggling with uh, some of the decisions. It's 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 not. Uh, it's not easy. I'm just trying to figure out this level. It's this level three building thing. It's because this level three building moves you down two on this track and we're about to score. That's that's what's kind of throwing me for a loop here because the scoring, I smell burnt toast. Okay, so here's what I'm trying to decide from. We know we can't go up here to build a level three building here. However, I noticed, oh look, I could go on either of these spots and build a level three building here. Now that would move me down to, so I mean, that doesn't actually change or well, yeah, it would mean I'm at a level one multiplier. So it costs me 10 points if I do that, but building a building moves me back up one. So I'm going to move down two and then up one. So it's actually not going to change my multiplier at all. And then I could get a level three building here that's worth 16 points and I move up twice on the Sagrada thing. That's pretty huge. That's pretty huge. Um, alternatively, if I go here, I get a cobblestone and I move up on a track, right? Now the cobblestone I could use over here and move up two more times. So that would earn me 10 points and help me solve this, hey, I have no space in my warehouse issue. Um, I also get two of these bonuses. I could take a cloth and, you know, increase one of these things so that I can earn some more points at the end of the game. It just, I think he ends up building a level three building next turn then. Oh, well, whatever, who cares? Let's just do it. I gotta do something, right? So let's get a level two building here. We'll go on our own spot, okay? Let's just place a cobblestone and move up on one of these, and we get two of these benefits. So let's place our cobblestone. Okay, this has to go adjacent to an existing cobblestone. I don't know if I cheated by placing this one on the edge. I just noticed that that is a cobblestone on there. Maybe I was supposed to place toward the center to begin with, but whoops. <laughs> That's no longer an option. We're just going there. We get to increase on this track by two, one, two. Okay, 
Uh, that makes me happy. Then um, I can pick two bonuses here that are different because we have at least three intersections. So I'm going to pick a cloth and two points. Take our two points, our cloth. You probably cheated, but no one has the rule book. Yeah, the rule book is most definitely not beside me on the stool right here. I definitely, yeah. I think I thought the first one could be anywhere and then all the others needed to be adjacent. And then I noticed that, hey, there's got this, this art in the center. Maybe it was supposed to be adjacent to that one. Whoops. Oh, well. Anyway, moving on. We're going to spend that cloth. And we're going to increase uh, this by, uh, by, no, we're going to increase this one. Okay, so we did this action, we did that action, we did our bonus for being on that spot. We're up into the times three multiplier now, which is going to make us happy. And we can build a level two building, right? We need at least one middle class citizen and this dude. They're going to go on the track down here. So we're probably scoring next turn. But there's a world where we fill these in and we don't. We'll see, I guess. Now we get to move up one on the Sagrada track. That means we get to take one of these. Um, and we get to... Lose, we get to move down one on here. So I either get five points and a resource or move up once and four points. I don't think we're going to get an extra turn. I think like he would have to build a building with two blue tiles in order for us to not get another turn. Or sorry, in order for us to get another turn. There are only blue tiles out and he favors blue tiles. So that's like decently likely. Let's just take this one. Let's let's take this one and hope because it might be an extra 10 points for us, right? I like 10 points. 10 points is cool. Nobody doesn't like earning 10 points. So we're going to score this. We're going to move up one on the um, on this track here and we're going to earn four points. Oh, if I can reach. I need evidence. Also, for some reason, Freddie Mercury and some opera singer is singing in my ear. <laughs> I'm not I'm not singing that one out, but uh, I'm glad for you. The music did stop. I am actually going to take a, a quick two minute break after this turn, I think. But um, OK, so we scored our our points. We got our our for our the Sagrada. We moved down kind of like eh, 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 moved all around on those tracks and we put this here. Oh, hey, look, we get our plus one. I forgot. We get our other plus one right here. So we've already actually made it to the times four. Gorgeous. Wonderful. Etc. Okay. We built our building. Oh, and we need to score our points for building our building. Nine points. Jesus. It is easy to forget that. All right, so we've made it past 100. We're at 105 to... The bot's 77, but we are one turn ahead. We're going to draw our two citizens for next turn. And we're going to play the bot turn. I feel like I also feel like I was supposed to shuffle. No, I was not. All right, bot turn. You must sing. It's the whole point of the stream. Because the title is James Str Sings in Front of Stream. One, no it isn't. Two, you guys would hate it <laughs> if I did that. Uh, I will openly admit I'm absolutely tone deaf. Me singing is just like pain. Pain. All right. So we're going to do the bot turn and then I'm going to take a quick break. Grab a drink. My coffee's just about out. James hates singing. I would love to be a competent, competent singer, but instead, I'm an awful singer. So, yeah. All right, so where's this guy going to move to? He wants to move to the nearest place where he can build a building that doesn't 
involve stopping. Or I guess the nearest place he can build a building is where he'll go. That's the first criteria. So. He could go. One, two. He can build a level three building. Dun, dun, dun. Or he could go one, two, and he can build a crappy building right there. And that's what I think he'll end up doing, actually, right? Because he tries to avoid our intersections. Or wait, no, no, hold on. The tiebreaker is the arrow that's shown for um, moving to the right. Or clockwise, rather. So there's no other... Yeah, he's going to go here, right? He's going to go get the real building. Let's actually play, like, as though the bot was semi-intelligent. He's going to go to that spot. Because he could build the crappy building here, but of course he would not, right? So especially because the bot, bot doesn't suffer penalties for building buildings like we do. We lose on our uh, track here. So he's going to go there. He's going to build a building. That means we're not going to score this round, but we'll score on my next turn instead. However, before he builds a building, he is going to, I think, yoink a public building. Build a public service from left to right. And he gets uh, victory points, and then we flip his next card. So he's going to take this one. He earns just a cool 10 points because he's way cooler than us. Sucks to suck. You're a ventriloquist. It has to be the answer. What? What about the beautiful voice talking to everyone? Oh, I see. Okay, listen. Talking is one thing. One, I also don't think I have a beautiful voice for talking. I think I have a disgusting nasally voice. But I feel like everybody dislikes their own voice. So, or most people do. And two... Singing is one thing, or talking is one thing, singing is another. Okay, so he's going to place a cobblestone, right? And it looks like there's a priority list here where he's going to place it on this Sagrada spot that I really wanted to take next time. And that bumps him over to here, which means he earns 10 points again. This guy and his, like, just printing points is really irritating. He's going to be ahead of us after this, actually, because... He can build a building, and he always prefers to build level 3 buildings when possible. So he's going to try and put that guy there. It's going to use... Oh, in fact, it's going to use three of these, and it will cause a scoring. Right? Three upper-class friends immediately jump out. They want to live in that new high-rise that's there. Okay? He moves up two on the Sagrada track. Oh, my God. Okay, so the bot just, like just got a thousand points so he moved up two on the sagrada track and gets 18 points for that cool and then if he was us he would move down on here but he isn't so he doesn't so he will just earn seven points for the building plus 11 18 points again cool <laughs> i'm loving this uh and suddenly we thought we were cool because we passed 100 and the bots at 133. <laughs> so the points on the Sagrada track are kind of front loaded, though, because uh, he can't earn more now. Right. Currently editing a video of my stupid voice and face. I, so legitimately, Jared, I'd love to know, do you dislike your own voice? Because, like, I think you have a great voice and... You look nice on camera, and your videos are well edited, and, uh, you know, like, they're enjoyable to watch. And uh, I'd be curious to know, like, because I really, yeah, like, whatever. I don't care how I look on camera, it doesn't bug me any, like, whatever. Um, but yeah, I really don't enjoy my own voice. I really think it's nasally and uh, monotone. Like, when I'm doing a video... Uh, for YouTube, like I did a video recently for the Bloody Inn, I did a review, 
And I, I feel like I have to be like, I am talking so over the top and exaggerated. And then I watch that video and it's like, I just sound like a normal person. Right. But if I talk how I would, how I would like, like in a more comfortable way, just sort of normally, it's like, I am a robot with a nasally voice. It's so bad. God, it's bad. Oh, I hate it. Thank you, though. Sincerely dislike my voice. Wow. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I think that's just a thing. Everybody hates their own voice or hates their own voice more specifically when you hear it on like video or recording, right? Like I don't mind my, my own voice like to talk to you now, but when I hear it back, it sounds a lot uh, higher pitched and more nasally than it does kind of to my to myself. And I loathe it. I just dislike it so much. Um, but I think everybody does. You know, you sound weird and that weirdness is interpreted as bad. I've done enough editing of myself to where I've grown accustomed to my voice without bone conduction. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because it's different. And um, yeah, I feel like I'm kind of over it. I don't like, I don't care, I guess. But I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a, it's an uncomfortable place to be, I guess. All right, so I got to finish this so I can take a quick break here, because otherwise uh, I'm going to have some problems. So we got to the next scoring. Uh, this guy got a bajillion points, built his big boy building, and this citizen track is at the uh, at the top now. Right, so that means we're gonna score this guy. So we earn two points per coin to a maximum of five. So 10 points, because we have five coins, but we earn it four times. So we're gonna earn 40 points, and just like that, we're ahead of the bot, but then he's gonna earn points as well. And he's gonna earn, I think, two times. Okay, so we multiply the scoring by his position on the track by the difficulty. So he earns two times two, that's four, times two because we're playing on easy. So he earns eight points. And we have resumed our lead. And we are happy. Now these are going to reset. And when we reach the end of this, we're going to do another scoring there. And it will be the end of the game as well. Totally ignored it. Oh, you know what? I read it and then I just didn't acknowledge it because I got so hung up on my stupid monotone voice. Sorry, Risto. Um, yeah, I feel like the Sagrada, like that whole thing is unbelievable. Um, it's actually interesting. We were playing Sagrada Artisans, um, which is a legacy game about the cons cons construction there um, with family of ours who recently traveled there. Right. And it was really interesting to have pictures and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And uh, it's like a wild project. And it's interesting to hear that it has like a, an end date, you know. I spent about an hour editing per minute of video. Wow, Jared, that is a lot. Um, I feel like the one thing. So I want to get back into YouTube content more consistently and the biggest problem for me right now is developing kind of a uh like a day-to-day -day workflow that I can stick to where I'm um just like like I like to script out my videos and then shoot them and then edit them and getting to a point where I'm actually like I, I feel like I'm always kicking around a hundred ideas and actually settling on one of those ideas and turning it into a video like this, getting, capturing some B-roll and whatever. That's what I get hung up on, right? And then once I've got that sort of started, you know, uh, I dick around with editing, editing for way longer than I want to. And that's the single part of the process that I would most like to improve upon, right? But um, it's, it's a slog. And like I said, I just, I just knocked the rust off and got back to, I mean, I've, I've made one YouTube video this year, one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I want to settle into a cycle where I'm hopefully putting out a video every week. 
And uh, part of that being successful is going to be uh, spending less time editing and kind of, I think it's a two pronged thing where I need to be a more comfortable with it, not being perfect and B just be faster. Right? Yeah. But what a video 10 out of 10. Thanks Risto. I appreciate you. Also, uh, Alkali, thanks for that lurk. All right. Uh, like I said before, I'm going to take a quick break here. I got to run to the washroom and get something else to drink. So I'm going to take a five minute break. We just did our second scoring. Um, there's more citizen tiles on the board now. So I feel like these last couple rounds, this will actually go pretty quickly. And then we're going to do our final scoring and uh, see where we end up. I don't actually even know how final scoring works in this game. I mean, I know some of the components included. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's going to be, uh, be a little iffy, but, uh, we'll do our best. Uh, so I'm going to take five and, uh, when I get back, we will round out the rest of this play of Barcelona. So I will see you guys very soon. All right. <laughs> Welcome back. Quick little break there. Grabbed like a teeny snack, made a fresh coffee. So there's that. Those videos are probably great. Are you talking about Jared's videos? Because they're excellent. Um, Caffeinated Miniatures on YouTube is Jared in chat. And um, you can take a wild guess what type of content he makes. Um, but it's excellently produced. It's really good. Um, so definitely should check it out. And uh, Risto, I appreciate your comments, man, uh, about the Bloody In video. I was I was really pleased with how that one came out. I mean, there's problems. I don't like my hook at the start, for instance. I really don't like it. And the stats agree with me. But, um, you know, overall, I was, I was pleased with how it came out. And I'm glad it uh, was enough to, you know, get you over the line on the, the purchasing decision there. So that's cool. Board games? Well, caffeinated miniatures paints minis, right? I met Jared at um, uh, a local con this year uh, in person, uh, but that had been arranged, sort of, by um, a friend of the channel, one Jamie Daggers, because, uh, yeah, Jared paints minis, so does Jamie, right? So, great content on Jared's YouTube. All right. So, back to Barcelona. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I will be back in one second because I need to fix the music. All right. Oh no, not the bee puns. 3,500 subscribers can't be bad. Oh no, it's excellent. Thanks for dropping that link in chat, Risto. I'm looking at it now. <laughs> I should be, I should be playing Barcelona instead of looking at Jared's excellent YouTube content. But yeah, if you're not following Jared on YouTube, you should be, um, cause it's, uh, it's great stuff. I like to think that miniatures is uh, like board game adjacent. You know, it's like the communities. I think there's a, I feel like there's a fair bit of overlap because obviously mini painters, there's potential for painting board game minis and lots of, lots of games, board games have miniatures now. I feel like so many more than um, previously, you know, uh, like nicer, better board games 10 years ago or 15 years ago, it was all like wooden components and stuff like that was a big deal. And it was rare to see minis. And you only saw minis in like American style games, Ameritrash, as we say. <laughs> and, um, you know, I feel like now those, there's such a, so 
there's like that was a very clear distinction. There was German Euro styled games and American styled games. And now they've melded together so much. And one of the things that's come out of that is we see minis a ton more in games that wouldn't have had minis in like in the past. You're right. It's it's awesome. What's my favorite food? You know, you know what my favorite food is. It's pizza, pizza, any type of pizza. In fact, I would say pizza that's new and different that I haven't tried before. What's yours? There are so many games with loads of great minis. I know it's true. I want to actually, well, it's funny, Jared. I was talking with um, Jamie. One, I'm going to start. I have to fix my broken gene stealer, uh, but I have Space Hulk sitting back there and uh, I want to paint that up. Um, and I thought I had it right here, but it might be at the other end of the table. Um, I have the box beyond the wall. I have the lid, but not the, the bottom of the box, which has the actual pieces in it. But I was um, I was putting together this uh, KDM mini uh, called Beyond the Wall. It's one of my my favorite minis. I've, I've uh, favorite KDM minis. I have quite a, a few of the uh, individual ones like the pinups and stuff. I really like this one uh, and I was having some assembly problems. So I was asking Jamie for a little bit of help. But um, yeah, you'll eat all the salmon in the world. That's true. I should make pizza maybe tomorrow. You should. There's never a bad time for more pizza, Risto. And um, yeah, Space Hulk, Jared, listen, we should play. <laughs> you're you're close enough. I, I would drive to your house to play some Space Hulk. The, the hardest thing about Space Hulk is that uh, I don't get it to the table very often, right? Um, Martina and I have played it, but I haven't played Space Hulk in a couple of years now, you know? but I would totally, I would be down. I love it. I actually find Space Hulk to be like such a strange anomaly that Space Hulk is an old game. And I appreciate that it's, <clears throat> I think on fourth edition now, but it's my impression. I haven't played any of the previous editions of Space Hulk, um, but it's my impression that they're all fairly similar. Like, the, I don't think the rules have actually changed and evolved a ton. And it's amazing to me that a game that's that old is less good. It has no right to be as good as it is, essentially. I'm surprised. Like, you know, sort of the general thing that I feel like about board games is that, like, modern games, on average, are better than older games right it's like we've just improved and come up with new mechanisms and uh things like that that's not to say that there aren't terrible games there's an unbelievable slew of mediocre games every year especially because of how many goddamn games get printed these days but generally speaking a game like this wouldn't have existed 10 years ago or 20 years ago and um you know they've evolved and moved on right it's iterative Newer games, on average, are better than older games. And Space Hulk is surprisingly amazing, even though it's like 30 years old or 40 years old, right? Space, Space, ugh. Okay, let's try that one again. Space Hulk and Blood Bowl were the games that got me into minis and war games. I've never played Blood Bowl and always thought it looked super interesting. Um, the thing that's always kept me out of more mini stuff, like more tabletop, um, is just like, you know, I remember always looking into the, like seeing the games workshop store in the mall and whatever and thinking about it. And the only reason I didn't get into Warhammer is it's like I know exactly how this ends and it ends with me like taking out a second mortgage to buy my cool Warhammer army, right? So Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, Bar Barcelona is uh, pretty cool so far. Welcome in. I like salmon, but it's expensive, so I need to wait for your cousin again. I missed that thing about your cousin. You said he was at a, f at a farm. Oh, wow. A salmon farm in Norway. Cool. I mean, listen, wild Atlantic salmon is the only way to go. Farmed salmon, eh, but you know. All right, so back to Barcelona. I got to play this game eventually. So we are through two of the scoring uh, periods here now. Uh, into kind of the last little bit of the game. So for this one, uh, 
we're going to earn points for large roads that we've built. Two points per um, large street multiplied by our par spot on the scoring track. We only have one on the board, so we're rather lacking. Um, also, we will get to... You get free salmon? Yeah, that's... I mean, listen, I w as much as I complained about... Um, about farmed salmon. I would eat lots of farmed salmon if it was free. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so we probably do need to look for some end game scoring opportunities here if we want to actually beat this bot because he just gained like a bajillion points, right? Um, so let's take a quick look at what we get at the end of the game. Um, we do our final scoring for our large uh, streets, and then we score points here. So we're gonna score points for removed cobblestone tiles, right? Um, I get expensive salmon. Yeah, you always wanna eat sushi, right? And you'll eat like your body weight in sushi. So anyways, we get points for having removed cobblestone tiles. We're going to get points for having placed out passengers I don't think we're going to get very many here. I mean, you can get 20 points if you get all your passengers out, but it's expensive. And we got to like, it takes turns and we haven't been doing it. Uh, and then we score each of these tiles, right? Multiplied by their thing. So we actually, uh, we kind of forgot about passengers. I say we, because I'm blaming chat for, for my failure. We get nine points per passenger that's adjacent to two buildings. We gotta get going on those passengers for sure. Seven thousand euros vacation pay. That's a pretty okay problem to have, Risto. You know the history about sushi and salmon? No, I do not. Please enlighten me. Okay, so that's our only scoring. Our only endgame scoring is cobblestones, passengers, and these things. So all of the things on our board. Now, this is the only one of these tiles we have. We probably want to grab some more. If we take one for free here, we already got that times two multiplier. So we can probably look for some points there. Uh, we desperately want to get these passengers out. Even if we get like, you know, uh, two or three more, that's like 30, 40 points, right? And um, we can also probably have some opportunities to build those level three buildings, which give us uh, an opportunity to get Sagrada tiles. And building buildings right now, the level three buildings are 18 points each. So any opportunity we have to get a level three building is totally worth taking. It was the Norwegians that came up with the concept of salmon sushi and spent the better part of a decade marketing and selling it in Japan. In fact, you could say salmon sushi is a Norwegian invention. Hmm. Level three, level three, smarty, level three. Okay, so it is our turn. How are we gonna do this? Um, we want to... This guy just got this level three building. And if he places, if either of these spots get taken, well, that's another level three building right here. As long as one of those uh, people is uh, upper class, right? So we want to take that level three building before he does. We also want to be placing large roads. And, you know, it wouldn't hurt us to get some of these public building tiles. That's this spot here. Those are also worth points, like 10 points each and some other perk. Um, oh, we need to shuffle his deck. Um, and they mostly, like they cost money of which we have lots. So let's not forget those, but let's get this, let's get this building out of the way. This level three building before uh, he gets there instead. So. We're going to place either here, where we gain an intersection and move up our multiplier, or here, where we're going to gain 
a large road and then two coins. We can't actually fit two coins. So we cannot take that spot because you can only do it if you can like fulfill it. And we cannot do that one. Also, I think this was his building here. That we forgot to put a thing on, whoops. Okay, um, so we really don't need an intersection. That sucks. Is there a way that we can execute on this and like burn a coin or something? Because I'm pretty sure we can't like, it's quite explicit. You have to be able to do an action in order to take it. So I think that includes like gaining money. Oh no, you can, we can, that's the only action we can do where we can make space. Okay, so we could do it. Okay, so let's do that then. Let's do this. We need to put out a large road. That's going to be worth points anyway. And we get two money. So we're only going to end up with one money because we would return one and then get two. Where do we want our large road to go? Um, we want this to go on a spot that's going to earn us something. If we put it in this middle section, it's worth four, six points, um, but no other perk. Uh, the only other option is we could put it on the cobblestone spot down here. We would get to move up, or here perhaps, we'd get to move up one on our... Uh, track here, but we'd only earn two points instead of um, six. We know that the um, level level three building is going to like nuke. It's going to move us down two on this. That sucks. So I'm tempted to, to forego the points and just um, move up on the track. So let's do that. We'll move up one. And, uh... Is that all we get? No, we, and then we get two points. That's right. That's it. Okay, two points. And so we did our road action. We've done our two coins action. Now we can we have to build a building. If we can, we're going to build this guy. Right? So it's one, two any, and an upper class. This happens to make this worth uh, quite a bit more uh, points. We get to move up two on our Sagrada track. So we'll have to pick one of the level three Sagrada bonuses. But first, we'll take our seven points plus 13 for building a building. So we'll take 20 points. And then we get to pick a level three Sagrada tile. So we either get... Well, this one's totally worthless to us. Three coins or three um, cloth in any combination. Or two on this track that we just moved down two on and four points. So we're gonna take that one. So we'll move right back to where we were um, and then we'll earn four points as well. God, I'm getting lost here. Sorry, it is just kind of hard for me to hear you. Why is it hard to hear? Is the is there a problem with the audio or is it just like it's noisy there or something? I think I remember this too much salmon. That sounds sounds familiar. Anyways, interesting. We play Barcelona, we learn about salmon. Why not? That's a real thing. Oh, it's noisy. Okay. That's not my fault. Good. Okay, so uh, we took our turn. We got all of our stuff. We built our building. I just read something in the notes in the like reference card here 
that I just felt like feels like mind blowing to me that it exists. And I want to check something in the rules real quick. I might have just had like a wild. I might have just had a wild epiphany. Okay, I don't think I did this wrong. I think there's a weird thing in the reference here. It says, gain VP from the citizen track and apply benefits. But this is the citizen track. And other than scoring, I don't think we do any other benefits there. I don't think we actually gain these VP like as we cover them or anything. And I double checked and I didn't see it anywhere. But this seems like a weird anomaly. I don't know how I feel about that. Barcelona is also real, although I was mostly drunk while in there. I mean, listen, maybe you maybe you broke the glass out for that picture, right? Maybe. Okay, so uh, it's the bot's turn. They are going to buy a public building. First, they're going to move and place out citizens where they can Construct a building, if at all possible. So, the only options for them, really, they won't be able to get a level three building because uh, there's not enough citizens on the board. But they would be able to construct something over there. Um, so they would move to this spot. And, <clears throat> They're going to get, get a public building. So they take from left to right the next one. They're going to just gain 10 points because they're cool like that. And then we flip out another card. And they're going to place a cobblestone. And they're going to put it on this one here where they take uh, a tile from here. And the tile they'll take is the top right one. Jerks, stealing our point uh, potential there and taking taking tiles that belong to us. And then they're going to build a building. So they're going to build just a lowly level one building over here with this working class and uh, upper class citizens. Okay. And uh, they gain one on this track. And then they gain 13 points for their trouble. And they are rather close to us. Also, this track, like these two, potentially like one more turn and the game is over. So this idea of like, hey, let's spend some time putting out passengers and stuff is looking rather, rather unlikely. But nonetheless, we will, uh, Keep on keeping on here and uh, see what we can do. We should put their marker on that building, which also increases them on this track. Now, this isn't worth a ton of points to us, right? Like it's four multiplied by whatever. Like even if we max out that track, it's 16 points. We could put out more roads, but I really don't know that it's, it's really worth it. I think rather we want to focus on trying to earn some of these other points. So, um, gaining these tiles might be lucrative. We might have to take a little look up there. That would be this spot. Uh, addi additionally, we wanna be using our tram. And the cobblestone thing is never bad, nor is this public house, right? Like, uh, public service. We can, we can potentially get 
some, uh, we get money to spend. We get 10 points every time we do that. So, and we earn back a bunch of the money and get bonus things here. So, uh, overall, this is looking like a pretty lucrative spot, but let's check what tiles are at the top. Maybe there's something super spicy that we can, um, we can earn some points with, right? So what do we got? Two points per tile like this. Two points and multiplied by the level there. Three points per, I don't know, not adjacent building or something like that. And two points per upgrade. And these we score potentially multiple times, right? Like we could potentially score any of those like four times if we place it here. It's just expensive to do so. Let's look at what that one is. But I think that overall, those are looking not super lucrative. Um, so the one... Three points for each of your corner buildings on the main board that are not part of the same block. Oh, we forgot to put markers on the corner buildings too. Right? Whoops. Uh, I am quite certain that one of these was mine and I think the other one was his. So we're just gonna do that now. It wouldn't have played out that way, but that's the fairest thing we can do. Anyways, I don't think any of those are great. So uh, are they gonna be worth more than 10 points? Unlikely, uh, even if we're scoring them multiple times. So let's instead take our friends here. I mean, we can do this spot. A challenge is that it's gonna enable him to get a level three building here, which sucks. I don't want that to happen, but I don't know that we can like play to deny him, right? Um, I'm just, I'm not sure. Right, because if we place our guys here, right, then uh, we can't construct a building. We can construct one here, but that would leave this. And then if he builds on either of these corners, then he can upgrade this into a level three building, which is worth like a boatload of points right now, right? So we don't really want to enable that. Um, that's that's sort of sucky. Uh, so maybe we go on this spot instead, right? If we go here, we can't build a building, neither can he, but we can still get our public service, which is important. We don't get our tram then though. Ugh, why is this so hard? Everything about this is horrible. I don't like it at all. I, I actually, I do, I do like it a lot. <laughs> I just, I'm struggling. I don't want to set him up to build level three buildings. That feels like bad play because every level three building right now is worth 20 points, right? And he always, the action he does is the same anyway. So we're basically just feeding him a free 20 points. And like, are we going to earn more than 20 points worth of value? We get 10 for our thing. We're going to earn 10 for the house and uh, nine for the tram, plus whatever other actions we get. I don't know. Let's just do it, whatever. I don't know that it matters. Probably we wanna leave behind the good worker so that we can get a level two up there or something. Um, but let's do that. So we can buy one of these buildings we probably want, we got money to spend. We probably want to buy one of the three remaining uh, higher valued ones. So uh, what do we get when we purchase these? We get to place a, um, place an intersection for free, I think, right? And also get, move up twice on this track. This track's not particularly valuable for us. And I don't think the intersections are hyper valuable either, 
right? Um, there's not a lot of not a lot to gain on the board from the intersections anymore. Uh, this one here just lets us move up twice on the Sagrada track, um, as well as on the Serta track here. So, I mean, we always get to move up two on this, whatever. But two on the Sagrada track would get us our fourth one, which is worth potentially a bunch of points. We need some space to store the goods, though. Uh, and then the final one there is one cloth for every block with at least one of your markers on it. Jeez, these are kind of kind of iffy. OK, so we're going to take this one, right? We're going to pay our three coins. One, two, three. We're going to take this uh, public service building. We immediately earn 10 points. Okay. Uh, we get to advance twice on here. Low value, but better than a kick in the pants. Uh, and then we get to move two on the Sagrada track, one, two, which means we get to pick one of the level four tiles. So we're either getting eight points and three resources or five resources and no points. So this is a no brainer, right? We want to take the eight points and three resources. Now we're about to pick up two coins potentially. So we're just gonna take three cloth because we can always switch those out. And I don't know what we're gonna need to spend here basically, if anything. Um, okay, so, oh, I see why intersections might, might be valuable. We get cooler stuff there. Okay, so we did our action here. Um, cloth, what do we need cloth for? If we take another one of these, which is another 10 point move uh, or more, we, we uh, need money, right? So is there anything that's gonna require more than two cloth? If we wanna increase this, we need four cloth, right? That would get us a times four multiplier. None of those were very good. I think we just sub out some of our cloth for money on the premise that we're gonna probably be doing that action uh, again at some point here. Okay, so I think we're happy here. Uh, we get, because we placed on our own intersection, we get to pick two different icons from our board down here. So we're gonna take two points. And then we either take a cloth or a money, which is irrelevant. We'll swap out this money for a money. Whatever. Who cares? We don't do anything. Um, and then we get to do our final action, our tram. The second time we've done it, the entirety of the game, uh, which is just sort of sad. <laughs> but nonetheless, here we are. Uh, and the way this works is we can move our tram one or two spaces, but on our own streets, we can move it for free. So um, I think honestly, we just want to move it one, right? Because, uh, or maybe two, because that leaves us with some options, I guess. Because then we get to take the action in the corresponding row and this action actually works out really nicely for us. Let's just move it one. And then let's uh, put out our worker. We have to pay a cloth for that. Okay. We'll put out this worker here. Because we're putting that on this street, we score that street. That's four points. And then uh, we get to take that street's action, which is to place two more streets. That's our final two streets. That's going to let us move up on this track one more time. And these can go anywhere. So we can put one here, which will get us three or five points. And we can put one here, which will get us four points. So we get a total of nine points for those streets. We're now at two or just past 200. Pretty cool. And then I think we're tapped out now. Um, we can build a building here just a level uh, one building. 
but oh that's gonna end the game actually damn i didn't realize that it was both green workers but denying him a turn is actually really good for us um so we're okay with that we're gonna build that level one building that's gonna let us move up the times four multiplier all planned of course and we're gonna score 13 points for it And I believe we do our final scoring now. I don't know that everyone else gets a turn, but let me double check. Game ending. Yeah, we're right there. That last, because there was a couple citizens out, These this last track goes a lot faster, right? Ah, damn, all players get the same number of turns. Okay, so we're going to do this scoring. Then the bot gets one more turn. Then we do final scoring. Whoever has the most wins. So, um, we get two times our number of large roads, which is two. So that's four times four. We get 16 points. Okay. And then moons? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say, Smarty, but it's it's weird. Okay, and then the bot gets two times two. That's our difficulty level. Four times the number here times two. So he'll get eight points. Oh, wow, he's way back here. We actually really... I mean, we're a turn ahead, ahead, but we really got a lot there. And then I believe on the last uh, one here, we don't actually move these because in some cases we earn, like, endgame points for those. It really hurts that we didn't, like, get something here. It would have been free points. Maybe we flubbed that one a bit. But, you know, opportunity cost and all that. Uh, okay. So, bot turn. This is the last one. And he's going to get a level 3 building on his last turn here, I think. We get two tiles. We flip this out. Okay. So, he's going to try and build a building uh, by moving. And if there's a tie, he will move to the left and we decide it kind of clockwise from there, right? So, opportunity cost, yeah, it's, it's my favorite thing. That's why it's the channel name, right? It is my favorite thing in board gaming. Okay, so listen, if we satisfy this the way it says that we should, he is going to build a level uh, two building instead of a level three building, right? Which feels a little silly, but we're just going to do it anyway, right? So he could go one, two or one, two and build a building in either case. Oh wait, actually, he wants to go into his own intersections, doesn't he? Well, maybe he will do the level three one and we gave him that huge turn exactly like we expected, right? So the number one thing is that he wants to go into his own intersection tile. And then if he can build a building, oh, that's bonus points. So he will go here, in fact. Good for him. Not good for us, but good for him. <laughs> okay. So, uh, he's going to move up one on here because uh, he's on his own intersection tile. Okay. And... Oh, wait. No, I'm wrong. He doesn't do that. He just gains two points. My mistake. Um... And then he is going to do his action here, which is to place out two streets. That's going to move him up on this. He tries to place these as close to him as possible while gaining um, rewards, but he'll place them immediately adjacent, even if there's no rewards. So I think he'd place this one here and that one there. He'll earn uh, three points. And then he'll score two and two, so he'll earn seven points total. 
for those. And we already moved him on the track. And then he's gonna go up on one of these. And then he's gonna build a building. And he can get a level three building. Because there's three dudes here, at least one of which is a upper class citizen. Because of the lack of middle class citizens in our city, he's not gonna earn a wild amount of points. I mean, wild, yes, but not as wild as it could have been. He'll earn 20, cool 20 points. So he has now surpassed 200 as well. And what was a commanding lead is feeling a little iffy. And he does not move backwards on these things. But he will. Oh, he doesn't have any more markers either, so I don't think he moves up. I'm not sure. It won't matter anyhow. Um, okay, so I think uh, that's it. And now we do final scoring. Expression of the day, Hingam Tringham, barely presentable and just about hanging together. Is that what the stream has been, Risto? Because I feel like a little, in some ways, the answer is yes. Absolutely. All right, so final scoring is um, pretty straightforward. Uh, we get our scoring on these things. We get our scoring for passengers. And we get our scoring for our... Um, why can't I think of what they are? The tiles that we've put out. They have a name. It's not come into mind. But uh, let's... Let's do our scoring. So we absolutely flubbed it on these. The only thing that we earn any points for uh, is this one here. So we're going to earn three points per passenger adjacent to at least two buildings. So that's both of our passengers. So we're going to earn six points for that, but we get to earn it three times. So we're going to earn 18 points. Okay. Not terrible, but the rest is an absolute waste. We upgraded this, but we never actually put a tile there. Like this just feels bad. Like these were free points sitting, I mean, they were free. We would have had to, to not do something else, right? But nonetheless, uh, we then earn points for our passengers. We put out two, so we earn a cool five points. And then we earn points for what the hell are these called? Why can I not remember it? It's really bugging me. Cobblestone for our cobblestone. We earn two, a whopping two points for our cobblestone. And then we do final scoring for the bot, which I'm going to assume is going to be offensively amazing, right? Um, All right, so he's gonna score victory points for the number of cobblestones removed from his player board and for passengers placed just like us. So he's gonna earn two and five points. Not unlike us, we also earned two and five, so seven. Okay. And then he ignores the conditions on these and it says he instead Oh, I can't even, you can't even see those because I'm being super clever here. He ignores the scoring on these. Okay, and it says that he'll earn points equal to the tile multiplied by the position of the marker next to it multiplied by our difficulty level. So he gets two times two times two for this one, so eight. And likewise on this one, he'll get two times two times two. So he's gonna get 16 points for those. And that's it. If we end the game with more victory points, we win. If we, if he has more, we lose. So we ended up with 258 points uh, to the bots, 224. So that's a win, guys. We did it. We did it. GG.
Great success. I need to get some new emotes. But we did it. 258, yeah. I feel like, you know, with the exception of that one turn where I got kind of all mixed around and took forever, um, I feel like that's about as competently as I could play a game for a first playthrough. Um, generally, this was really a satisfying experience. I really enjoyed um, this game, despite the bot being the type of bot I would really, I really tend to not. Holy shit, mark it in your calendars. It wasn't a loss. Woo. <laughs> I appreciate you, Jared. Oh, my God. So, uh, yeah, despite the fact that this style of bot is the type of bot that I don't really like, right? This is the sort of solo game. Well, I don't, I don't know. I guess this is like a typical type of solo game. There's, there's two types usually, right? Um, or two really common types. There's the, you're just playing against a scoring chart. Basically, the bloody inn is like that. That's terrible. That's such a half ass method of having a solo mode. And then there's like this one where we've got a like kind of bot player that, um, you know, sorta takes actions, but not really. And just like kind of scores an arbitrary number of points. I think there's sort of like two common types. And this is like, or two, two types generally, and this is like the the simpler of the two, right? It just, the bot's doing things. There's not really any kind of like intelligence there or anything. It's fairly um, deterministic. Like you, you generally can anticipate or know what it's going to do. And, you know, in most cases, it's like it doesn't spend resources. It just arbitrarily earns points somehow, right? I don't love those, but this one felt okay because normally the, one of the things that I don't like about those is that they're meddlesome. Usually they go out of their way to be set up to just like kind of get in your way in an almost random sort of way that's like not very satisfying to play against, right? Um, that wasn't the case here. On principle, I don't like that, hey, this just scores points automatically by doing things and whatever. I don't love that. But because it wasn't like frustrating to play against by just being sort of arbitrarily in your face, it was enjoyable, right? And um, I really, uh, I really think this would be an excellent game with uh, a couple players at the table. A bit visually challenging, like there's a lot on the go here, you know, like it's very colorful too, right? Like there's just all kinds of stuff happening here and it's maybe a little visually indistinct in a way that i don't love but like that's a minor complaint so yeah overall super cool game i would happily play this again on solo mode i think with a couple tweaks the solo bot could feel a lot better you know if nothing else i like games where like like the decision making uh, for priority here, it's like, oh, you know, you have a card and it shows you a direction. And it's like, if there's a tie, which there often is, do it in this direction. But that's like such a crappy criteria because it has no basis in what a normal player would do or what's gonna be challenging for you or good for the bot. And I think a simple rules adjustment would be just like, decide tiebreakers in the way that's hardest for you. Right? I mean, setup took three hours, so that's a thing. Uh, it kind of looks overwhelming. Yeah, I mean, I would say like this is like a, you know, does this feel like a heavy game? Not really, but like getting there, right? It is visually overwhelming, and that's what I mean, Smarty. It's like, I think if you were like, one, it's just visually overwhelming, period. Two, I feel like I, I, 
it's hard to say at a glance, but I feel like, you know, if you struggled, like if you were colorblind or something like that, this probably is really noisy and difficult. Um, but I don't know that objectively, right? Yeah, the start of stream, you said two minutes equals 10 hours. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, overall, it's like the setup took a long time, but that was because I wasn't familiar with it. There are a lot of pieces and there is some sorting to do. I don't love that about this, but it's not as bad as it looks, I think. Um, you know, being familiar with it now, I think this is the sort of thing, whatever. It's sort of this weird thing with board games where sometimes when you can like put them in a way, put them away in such a way that it makes it very favorable to set up next time. It still feels like setup time because it's just sort of end loaded instead of front loaded, but nonetheless, um, you know, it's not as bad as it seemed. Also super highly variable, right? Like we had three scoring conditions here that we used, um, but there's like 20, <laughs> right? And you pick three every game and these public uh, buildings, public services are different. Um, the scoring that's available for these tiles here, uh, you know, changes over the course of the game. Anyways, highly vari variable, didn't actually feel point salad -y. some good opportunity cost decisions, even with the bot, particularly around those level three buildings. I liked it. The cat is staring me down while I'm eating dinner right now. Yeah, that happens. That happens. Cat's probably going to try and steal your dinner too. I know mine do. I'm scared. Just remember, it's a cat. <laughs> you can handle it. All right, so. Throw some Sam into the cat. I mean, yeah, that would distract it, you know? Okay, so uh, I think we're going to find a, uh, a place to raid. Let's go see what kind of board game friends we have on. And... Uh, Time rollers on, so that's an option. And it's always nice to ride uh, to raid into time roller, but um, we raid into time roller fairly often, so I like to mix it up a little bit. You know, let's see what else we got. Art board games is playing Sagrada Artisans. That's kind of on brand, kind of related. There's not a whole lot, unsurprisingly, not a whole lot in the board game category. Who else do I have online that might be fun to raid? Jamie, Trombone? I don't think Jamie or Trombone are streaming. Jamie never... Oh, you know what? We're raiding into Ray. Ray was in here earlier. It was really nice. I haven't caught any of her streams. She's only been streaming for an hour. Um, we're going to raid into, into Ray's retros. So... If you guys don't know, um, Ray was uh, previously the host uh, for the CGE channel, Check Games Edition, and she's moved on from CGE, but has her own personal channel, Ray's Retros, where they uh, play, unsurprisingly, retro games and um, mostly like, uh, like uh, some like, like, God, uh, like boyfriend dungeon, whatever goofy games it's a blast she's super fun we're gonna go there and um let me think about things important things i need to tell you before we do so my next stream will be this coming wednesday it will not be on twitch it will be on youtube i think the spam just went in the uh in the chat there she went to play D. &D. oh trombone did i see oh well, thank you jared we won we we won i didn't lose imagine um so yeah, my next stream will not be on Twitch. It will be on Wednesday, only on YouTube. Uh, I'll drop the links in uh, chat again. If you're not subscribed to me on, uh, on still speechless, oh, I love it. Anyways, if you're not subscribed to me on YouTube, uh, I am trying to push more content there and am really trying to figure out my workflow to get that to be a bit more, you know, consistent. And I would very much appreciate uh, a follow. Also, at least some of my live streams every Wednesday on YouTube because my daughter has started joining me and she is not able to join me on Twitch. She's not old enough. So um, check us out on YouTube on Wednesday. 
Other than that, I will be back here on Thursday. And I know it's a little ways in the in the future, but Martina and I will be streaming together on, I think it's the 26th um, for Tabletop After Dark. So a couple weeks yet, but um, I'm looking forward to that. We're going to play a, a food-based game. I'm not going to not gonna tell you what it is, but it's, it's going to be fun. So uh, thanks for being here. Let's get this raid set up. Yep, the 26th. See, Martina always knows. Martina, like, keeps, I, I, my schedule would be a shit show if it wasn't for Martina keeping me straight. Like, I just, I don't know. Dates are not my thing, and it would be a disaster. But let's raid into Ray's Retros. Friend of the channel. I like Ray a lot. I look up to her as a content creator as well. She does good stuff, and at least previously in the board game space, was an absolute leader. So we're going to set up this raid and I will see you guys hopefully this coming Wednesday on YouTube. And if not, back here on Twitch on Thursday night, just like usual. So thanks for being here, guys. And uh, we'll see you soon.